Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. You may be wondering why do I have these pictures of birds here, of budgies. This is because we're going to discuss about the most fascinating respiratory conditions that I can think of, and that is hypersensitivity pneumonitis, like the name in the title. What is this hypersensitivity pneumonitis? It's one of the strangest conditions you will encounter in the field of respiratory disease. It is when we inhale something from the environment, something microscopic. It could be path dander. It could be some little bit of protein that falls off the feathers of this little guy. All right, so look at this guy. We kiss the little budgie, it's cute. This one's really cute. These are really cute. They're all very cute birds. But some people, for example, can react to these little bits of protein when they inhale them in the lungs it causes inflammation of the lungs and that can lead to lung scarring and it's it's not only due to birds let's let's look at this so if i look on wikipedia let's say if i look up hypersensitivity hypersensitivity pneumonitis we can go to i'll just go to the wikipedia page because i know that there is a list of very very weird things uh, that can happen and you have these exotic names bird fancier's lung we did mention the little budgies with the avian proteins that cause sensitization and what do i mean by sensitizations i'll explain in a second but look look how many weird things you can have compost lung due to aspergillus or fungi in compost coffee bean dust causing lung disease and fibrosis lung scarring farmer's lung moldy hay, all kinds of bacteria and molds that cause potentially a reaction in the lungs, an immune reaction, inflammation and lung scarring, hot tub lung, humidifier lung, laboratory workers lung. These are weird things. These are very, very weird things. Sauna workers lung. Look at this whole list and it's not a comprehensive list. Now this is a fascinating disease and used to be called extrinsic allergic alveolitis which just means basically an allergic inflammation of the alveoli of the lung of the deeper parts of the lung uh, this is how it was called in the past and basically it outlines what this condition is hypersensitivity pneumonitis pneumonitis it just refers to sort of inflammation of the lungs a condition in the lungs that's caused by a hypersensitivity reaction to things in the environment. But just the fact that you can keep a bird in your house, for example, a cute little bird that can <laughs> make you so sick and potentially kill you, it's crazy. And you have three types of this condition. Basically, it has an acute form where, for example, you get exposed to a lot of, let's say, avian proteins or some other thing, coffee bean dust or some other mold. And it can cause an acute reaction that can resemble a pneumonia at some point. And you may feel really unwell and you may have repeated episodes of that in a sort of a subacute form, which is the second uh, type of this hypersensitivity pneumonitis. You have these repeated episodes that look like chest infections, but they're actually triggered by inflammation caused by inhaling something from the environment, which I think is, is extremely fascinating. And then the worst bit is that in some people, and I'll tell you in a minute about a case that I had recently. I'll adapt the details a little bit, but just to get a picture, you can get chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is a fibrotic lung disease. So it means that the lungs progressively become scarred because we're inhaling these little proteins from the environment. And these are actually causing our lungs to inflame and to lead to fibrosis. It's crazy. So I'll tell you about a patient that I had recently. I'm adapting some details from the case, but just to, to sort of outline a very typical textbook-like case of hypersensitivity in pneumonitis. So I, had, I saw this lady in the UK and she was um, in her 80s and she was given basically some budgies, some pet budgies by, um, by basically her family, right? So her family, wanted to support her because she was uh, a little bit lonely in her older age and she gave her these pet budgies and in the first two years everything was fine then she was diagnosed with a form of asthma subsequently basically from this asthma 
It didn't seem to respond very well to inhalers. She was on an inhaler for asthma. It was controlled. She was responding a little bit, but things were still progressing. And normally that doesn't, uh, that's not normal behavior for asthma. So slowly, slowly, she ended up having a chest X-ray, then a CT scan, and it revealed fibrosis and lung inflammation. We did some blood tests. We figured out that she was actually sensitized to avian proteins, specifically for budgies. And from then on, basically, we made this diagnosis of chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is a form of lung fibrosis. And it's, in my mind, it's fascinating that you can have so many things in the environment. You may be living in a humid environment. There may be some mist, some, some mold somewhere around your house, and it can trigger lung inflammation, lung fibrosis, which can be very debilitating because once that lung fibrosis is there, it cannot really be reversed. So it's very, very interesting. And I think it's important to recognize this early. And of course, these are rare conditions. So I'm not saying that everyone who has, for example, a late onset asthma in their 70s or 80s will have hypertens hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but it could be. It could be something else, but it, it is a fascinating disease that can be caused by something environmental. And the only way to diagnose it really is to try to really dig deep into that person's history, figure out what they've inhaled potentially, where their environment, what's in their environment, what's at their workplace. Sometimes you can even go as far as to get them to collect some scrapings of some mold around their house that's a little bit suspicious and that can be tested against the patient's blood to see if that triggers a reaction and that's your confirmation. So there are a lot of interesting, fascinating things about this condition. And I just wanted to sort of briefly mention that although it's rare, it's something that can happen and it can exist. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this was interesting to you. If you have any other questions related to respiratory disease, I'll be more than happy to make future videos and try to clarify things a bit. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like this type of content or, you know, just give me some honest feed feedback. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in future videos in my comment section. You never know. All the best to you and good health.